Rodolfo, I want to understand the mind. To understand the mind, I have to understand the brain. And to begin with the brain, I like to start with structure. It's simple, and I can look at parts and, and then maybe begin to have understanding. So if I want to think about brain structure, what, where, where do I begin with the brain? Right, well, the, uh, the easiest way to, to begin is to uh, remember what, what is it the brain really uh, does. The, the brain um, has to make an image of external reality. Mm. Uh, and it does so by measuring very different things. For instance, light levels, and actually using eyes to make an image with a, with a lens, which is then goes to the retina. And totally different things, such as uh, the uh, vibrations of the air that may coexist outside with an object. Now, this, this all of this or if it's something I imagine you know, having a bird on your hand and you, I see it, you know, it's a bird, and you see that um, it, it has a shape, it has a, a color, it may sing. Now, how is it that you can make a bird? How is it that you can put together this information yeah. that comes from all the senses into one element? Right. So, okay, so the anatomy of the system is done, it's, it's evolved, has evolved to be able to make internal objects. Internal objects. Internal objects. And, so, and, and taking all these different modalities and making one. That's right. So, okay. so, so the question is, okay, what do we know about the visual system? So we know photons get the retina, the retina goes to the thalamus, the central part, and then it goes to the cortex, the mode, to the visual cortex, and then uh, the visual cortex uh, separates color from position, from movement, and so on. So, it's, it is like masticating reality. You know? <laughs> chewing like, it up. Chewing it up. Right? <laughs> but once you chew it up, you have to bring it back together. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So you have this system that projects from the central to, to the cortex, which is outside. This cortex returns to the beginning, to be, turns back to the thalamus. And the system is continually being recursive. So the thalamus is in the center the of the center, brain. It's center. like a control center, right. if you and, will. And that's it's right. a relay center, a control it's center. It's really not a relay center as follows. It, it, the information from the outside comes to the thalamus, goes to the cortex, to return to the thalamus, goes to the cortex. So there is this continuous vortex of activity. Ah. Right. So it is continuously moving, continuously moving. It does two things. It mixes together, like in a mixing truck, yes. doing, doing yes. uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, cement or something. It mixes uh, up, uh. or puts together vision and audition and sense and tactile and, keeps spinning, and, and it keeps spinning in, in, in this vortex. That, this is the vortex. It's not only that. It's, it moves at the same speed as reality moves. Mm. It, 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 imagine that we, you make an image that was staying behind. Yeah, exactly. you, you will die. Yeah, right. <laughs> Imagine a system was faster than you move. Bad also because yeah. then you know you, you will throw yourself to a net that doesn't exist. Right. So it has to be match reality. It has to match reality dynamically. So it is a system that internalizes and binds in time by coherence. Many, I, I tell my students, imagine. That these cells were holding hands, dancing together, <laughs> and by making this, 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 these forms, these geometries represent reality. And it's 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 coherent in time. It's it's coherent in time, and the anatomy says green as opposed to blue, as opposed to black, whatever. Uh, high notes as opposed to low notes. So at every moment in time, the system is selecting from the senses the type of dream that you make. And it involves the binding, takes all of these different ideas and brings them together. Right. Now, for that to occur, the system has to have the ability to have superposition. That is, that, uh, that when you see green, you don't see blue, you don't see red, and so on. Yes. So it, it is selecting at cortical level and then at thalamic level. I mean, at different levels, it's selecting uh, uh, the geometry. You can almost say, you know, this is such a lovely story. Uh, imagine a frog. A frog has a very good, very small cortex. He has a nice thalamus, a brain stem, and so on. Can, can a frog see? Well, of course he can see. Can he feel pain? Yeah. Okay. But of course he can't read too well. Okay. He can't, the, the image, they have a reality, is what it needs to survive. Yes. So, what, so when we look at the, the, the animal kingdom, we see that the brains represent beautifully not only what 
what the animal can do, but where it stands. In what it needs to do. What niche in evolution yes. it is covering. Right, right. So the system is, the anatomy of the system tells it where you sit. Right. You, know, so, you are finched with a long beak, ergo, you must be able to smell what... I mean. So it, it is beautifully, it is beautifully uh, um, congruent with the environment you live in. So this thalamocortical system from the center of the brain that, that has this vortex keeps going back, it, it chooses a red, green rather than red, it selects out, and also it takes different modalities and binds them together. So you have this one image of this bird and it, right. and it binds it together. Absolutely. So that's what morphology is to me. It is an instrument. So morphology is, is the structure. The structure. The structure is an instrument capable of making that internal reality. That is so good. You can drive wow. a car with. Wow. You can drive right. a plane. I mean, you can fly a plane. It is that dynamic. It is uh, that um, complete. Now, you've also talked about in this context these fixed action patterns that are repetitively used in this process. Uh, absolutely. That you so, call upon. Right. So, so, so we simplify. We make, uh, we say mortal, we say whatever, and, and we define the category. So fixed action patterns are category definition from a motor point of view. Now, it, most people can accept that if I ride a bicycle, that's a fixed action pattern. If I, if I drive a car, I'm not thinking about it. But you also talk about some pretty different things like emotion or language are also fixed action patterns. Absolutely, they're fixed action patterns. And uh, so playing a violin is something that you have to do every day. You have to, you have to uh, make perfect your fixed action pattern. Now, but, so the question is, but how do you know that it lives somewhere? So, well, there's pathology. There, there are beautiful cases that tell you that. For instance, we had uh, a case uh, uh, that we studied with uh, Nico Schiff and, and, and uh, the Fred Plum uh, in neurology, studied here with, using this device, uh, of a person uh, that was in coma for a long, long time. In a coma. Uh -huh. In absolute coma. And the person had a little bit of cortex, a little bit of thalamus and brainstem. That person uh, could speak words, he couldn't understand anything. There was no organized, but he would say words. He would say, split. No, he would say certain things that you would recognize as a clear word. So how is it possible? Even though it was in a coma for Absolutely. 20 years. So what, what does it mean? It means that the system has a well-defined set of connections that allow you to do things that you recognize as clear language. And those words were these fixed action patterns. So there are millions of fixed okay. action there, patterns. There are there. fixed action patterns, there are words, there are fixed action patterns. There is, as we all know, love, uh, desire, um, hate. I mean, all of these emotional events that are fixed. I mean, you know, if, then you know very well that. Uh, when you, you like somebody, you, you, you actually pardon things. <laughs> you, you sort of make things a little different. If you don't, you yeah. also are a little bit rough and so on. So right. all of and these things happen in all of us. Not only that, you can if you take drugs, you can actually move into fixed action patterns that are, people get enormous highs emotionally from drugs. So you know it's it triggers some. It, it triggers automatic, a well defined yes, automatic yes, event. Right. Right, right. So when most people think of structure, they think of, you know, two halves of the brain or the cerebellum, you know, some of these gross structures. But when you talk about the structure, the morphology of the brain, you see a much deeper richness with these fixed action patterns, the thalamocortical systems. Uh, this is the real structure yeah, yeah, of the brain. But, but you know, and, and the, there is a, trying to, trying to, to, to uh, draw uh, similarities with the external world. To me, one of the most beautiful ways to think of the nervous system is as an orchestra. Mm. You have an, in the center a director, a conductor that actually decides when the things come in, but you have the instruments outside, all of them play at the same time. Mm. Mm. And they actually make an event, a musical situation, mm. very much like we may make a movement, we may make a thought. It is produced by many things simultaneously with a similar rhythmicity in a fashion that when together they make a something that no instrument alone can make. And the director is this thalamocortical system right in the center. Absolutely. Not only that, music is machine language for the brain. <laughs> oh.